Hello. Today we are going to learn this very beautiful poem written by Henry Wordsworth Longfellow. The title is Windmill. In this poem, uh, Henry Wordsworth Longfellow, he describes the windmill. He gives all the human qualities to the windmill. So we can say that this poem is an excellent example of personification. So let's learn what he has written in the poem. First of all, I'll read the poem. So everybody just pay close attention to the words. He writes, Behold, a giant am I, a loft here in my tower. With my granite jaws I devour the maize and the wheat and the rye and grind them into flour. I look down over farms in the fields of grain I see, the harvest that is to be. And I fling to here in my arms, for I know it is all for me. I hear the sound of flails far off from the threshing floor, in barns with their open doors, and the wind, the wind in my cells, louder and louder roars. I stand here in my place with my foot on the rock below and whichever way it may blow i meet it face to face as a brave man meets his foe and while we wrestle and strive my master the miller stands and feed me with his hands for he knows who makes him thrive who makes him lord of lands on sundays I take my rest. Church going bells begin, their low melodious din. I cross my arms on my breast, and all is peace within, and all is peace within. So, uh, really, such a beautiful poem. This poem teaches us so many things. So, we learn stanza wise description of the poem. Uh, here in the poem, Wordsworth, he says that. Uh, behold a giant am I means here the windmill it is expressing itself he is saying that I am such a behold behold and giant behold means look at me giant means such a huge structure structure gigantic such like great uh, so uh, windmill says such a behold such a looking at me I am giant I am such a huge structure I am standing here. Aloft here in my tower. Aloft means upside here in my tower. Such a huge and tall. I am standing in my tower. With my granite jaws I devour. Granite jaws. Okay. So jaw everybody you are known that jaw means it's a part of mouth. Okay. Lower part of our uh, mouth. This is known as jaws. And devour or devo it, it means eating something very greedily or speedily that is called devourer so uh, inside the structure of the windmill is it is made of granite stone it is the name of a stone and uh, that stone is used to crush whatever we put inside the windmill so it has granite jaws like we have our jaw like the same granite jaws uh, the windmill it has and that uh, the jaws use the windmill to devour means eating greedy or hurriedly something the maize so what does it eat okay so it eats maize wheat and rye okay so these are the three names of cereals we use to crush them make the flour and make rapa, uh, whatever chapati or uh, eatings okay food so uh, in those days uh, the the windmill it was used for the as a, a flour mill okay so and it has granite jaws these all things uh, cereals put inside and we get uh, the flour of these things and grind them into flour so crush all the grains that wheat rye and maize into flour so this task we will understand for what purpose they would uh, install the windmills in their in their farm 
so basically windmill uh, you it was used for different purposes as you can understand here the purpose of windmill in the ancient period of time it was used for uh, making flour from the grain or grind the grain and even drawing water also it was used even drawing water from the canal or something somewhere else uh, in the next stanza he writes I look down over the farms in the fields of grain I see the harvest that is to be and I feeling true I fling through the air in my arms for I know it is all for me so you can imagine the windmill it is standing uh, in the farm looking everywhere grown farm and as if the windmill says everything is made for me eventually these all things are coming at me and i will crush them all to make the floor so windmill says look down over the farms when i look down everywhere the farms in the fields of grain i see so what do i see so it says that i see grains everywhere grown the harvest that is to be harvest harvest means the crop which is about to ripe that is called harvest and i fling through the air in my arms fling means uh, spreads okay here the meaning fling means actually fling means throw something speedily but here spreads the air in my arms or uh, goes through the air in my arms arms vim arms means the sails of windmill so here arms words is used for the sales of the windmill for i know it is all for me and the windmill says that these all things means wheat maize and rye all the grains eventually will come to me this is all for me it is my task to crush this these all things devour these all things so i hear the sound of flails in the third stanza it says i hear the sound of flails flails means the threshing or we can say the harvesting tools that farmer used to chop down the the crops so that is known as here flails i hear the sound of flails means i hear the sound of chopping crop far off from the threshing floor and threshing floors means the area where they started uh, cutting down the crop and they have started cutting the crops i know the threshing floor means bed where they started threshing the uh, ripe uh, harvest in barns in their open doors barns this is also a new word barns mills uh, we can simply call it barns means the place where uh, food grains can be stored so go down the word can we use we can use so barns with their open door so farmer they have opened the doors of the barns because they have harvested their crops in in the field they have kept this uh, they opened the door and kept the things inside the barns to protect from rain or uh, any other things and eventually whatever they have stored in the barns means go down that will come to me and the wind the wind in my cells louder and louder roars when i understand that the farmer they have started chopping the crop uh, inside the farm and they have stored inside the barns eventually that will come to me that gives me a kind of energy so the windmill says wind and the wind i realize the wind in my cells and the wind goes through my cells and because of the wind power the cells started moving off and when the windmill starts to move with the full speed at that makes louder and louder roar so roar represent here sound which is made by the windmill because of the movement or the moving of the cells simply we can say in this third stanza the windmill it uh, says that it is a time to start my work it says yes now crop uh, is completely ready they have stored inside the barns and it is a time that i have to start my work i have spreaded my cells and uh, the roars roaring sound of my cells can be heard now the next stanza i stayed here in my place with my foot on the rock below see the windmill it says i am here my 
my base is made from stone my feet are made from stone i stand here in my place in the farm with my foot on the rock below my feet are made from rocks such granite uh, such a great rocks are there and i i am firm standing here in the farm so whatever the wind will come to me as with a forceful or with a blow okay with my foot on the rock below i am standing here below with my foot are made from rock and whichever way it may blow so the windmill says the force of the wind cannot defeat me okay whatever flow of the wind or blow it may very forcefully may blow but i meet it face to face i meet it means what it means air i meet the force of air so i meet i face such a forceful wind i will not deny i will not uh, means collapse down even whatever way whatever force the air may come or a wind may come as a brave man meets his foe foe means enemy as a brave man gallant person meet uh, meets his uh, foe his enemy with a full gallantry with such a attitude i also stand here and meet my foe who is my foe my the forceful wind is my foe but i will not turn my my side i always face the forceful wind as if as if a brave man meets his foe so here one thing we can learn from this uh, uh, windmill i think so whenever uh, some forceful things or uh, sometimes we may feel some difficulties in our life so we should not turn our uh, direction because of that uh, that thing so we have to face the thing we have to face that evil all l or men to overcome that problem so as here the windmill it faces to the forceful wind we have to face the difficult situations coming in our life as if the brave man meets his foe the next stanza wordsworth he writes and while we rustle and strive my master the miller stands and feeds me with his hands for he knows who makes him thrive who makes him lord of lands so here uh, see and while we rustle and strive we rustle and strive rustle and strive strive means struggle rustling means uh, we can say fighting with so while we rustle and strive means i start work i start i start fighting with the the wind i moves my cells moves i start my work i grind the floor so that is rustling and strive my work my master when i rustle and strive my master master means the owner of the windmill he uh, the miller master is the person who is skilled using or uh, who is uh, skilled in the use of this windmill and miller miller is the owner of this windmill so uh, it says my master stands me and stands beside me the miller is my master uh, whom i am belong to and feed him with his hands and he feeds him he feeds me with his hands he put inside uh, the grain in my mouth and i start to to grind the the grains for he knows why he why he feeds me because he also uh, has some profit from me why he feeds me because he knows he knows who makes him thrive thrive means prosper grow okay so growing developing prospering that is the thrive thrive so he knows that i uh, i help him to thrive to prosper who makes him lord of lands even i helped him to made the lord of lands owner of lands because i became a tool which can he use to earn money so i made the thing which can be helpful for him to earn money and in the last stanza windmill says on sundays i take my rest church going bell begin their low melodious din i cross my arms on my breast and all is peace within 
so we can understand one thing even a thing can take rest on sunday it really require requires so we human being also as we take the rest here we can see on sundays i take my rest church going bells begin and on sundays people go to church to pray for their uh, mind contentment they go, go to the church and make them holy ones themselves so here uh, the mill windmill it says my master goes to the church on sundays and on that day i take my rest when i realize the low melody as a din din means the sound loud sound of the bell which can be heard on sundays in the church so low melodious melodious means sweet it's a din okay loud sound see here we can say two things are contrast melodious also and din also okay so melodious din such a loud noise of the bell made by the bell that can be harsh but for uh, for us because it belongs to it is from the chair so it realizes as a melodious din so when i hear the sound i cross my arms on my breast to pay my tribute to the god to pay my uh, sympathy or we can say to 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 pay my honor to the god i bow down to the god and all is peace within i realize the peace in myself in my heart in my soul so dear friends in the last stanza we can see that all the days we can work but we at least require a day to make oneself uh, means you know, free or we can understand here one thing that we have to reserve some times to be content to be content person so here henry words what long fellow he has given all the human characteristics to the windmill and tries to make the things uh, understand for all of us so dear all we have learned here this poem now see there are some words in the poem which are new uh, aloft means up in the air or overhead barns means large farm uh, out buildings use chiefly for storing hay grain and so other householding or livestock devour or devour eat greedily din means loud noise flails means a threshing tool strive means extra effort thrive means prosper uh, it's a small paragraph about the author or the poet uh, henry words for longfellow you can see his timing 1807 to 1882 this some things you you should know about the windmill so did you know you can read these things now we'll discuss the question answer of this uh, poem since a short uh, stanza is given only three lines are given and on the basis of these three stanza uh, one stanza some three four questions are there so you can read the questions and you can easily understand so we'll directly move to the answers i'll show you the answers of based on this poem see here are the questions you can pause the video and you can see which questions are there okay so identify the uh, figure of speech is here two simile and alliteration to figure of speech we can see here and one activity small activity so here this poem we have learned uh, so many things uh, i'll show you now the answers of this textual exercise so everybody you simply can just pause the video and you can write down all the answers yes see here these are the answers of the textual exercise so yes it's very easy to write you because uh, we don't have that much time to to explain everything so everybody just go through the video whenever whichever answer you want to write or you want to read just pause the video and you can get it okay so this is the textual exercise i am showing you you simply can pause the video and you can complete this yes this is the last question yeah okay so now uh, we have uh, one worksheet also on the basis of this on the basis of this poem 
I'll directly show you the answers of the worksheet that must be completed by you. This is the worksheet. Question number one, fill in the blank. Yes, in the bold green, sorry, blue, you can see the answer. These are the answers. It's very easy. Even some extra questions are given. You can simply read the questions and complete even in your worksheet. Okay. Or uh, these answers just for your reference purpose. You just read the answers and you can uh, write the answers by own. I don't expect that you can copy all the answers as it is and write. Okay. So you just read these answers and prepare your own answer and complete the worksheet. Yes. Uh, yes, so we have completed here the poem windmill. I hope so you understood if you found, if you still find any difficulty in the poem You can ask me or you can even comment. I will try to answer you. So thank you. Thank you very much for being with me. Thanks